Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and today we're going to talk about our second part of Spider-Man Family, which was a book that came out around the time of the Spider-Man 3 movie, when they were doing the storyline called Back in Black, and they had, you know, in the main Amazing Spider-Man book, he was back in the black costume, and then in the other books that they were making at the time uh, by Peter David and J. Michael Skrzynski, they were all writing like Spider-Man back in the black costume, but Sean McKeever, what he was doing was these little, like, mini stories that they put in compilation books. So what these books did was they would take, a, like, a new story like that, and then they would put in, like, another new story, maybe one with, like, Black Hat or another character or Sandman or something like that, and then they would... Uh, Put in like reprint some older stuff as well like spider-man 29 uh 2099 or green goblin and uh and they were kind of fun but they were they were kind of expensive i think they were like 399 which or 499 at the time i can't remember uh but you know the short stories in them were a lot of fun and you can pick them up today in digital form on comiXology and i think if you watch for a sale you can get them as low as 99 cents but overall i think they just cost like a dollar 99 and that is not a bad price for these storylines even if you're just getting it for the short stories because i feel like these ones are really really good and then the last one we talked about the symbiote going off on its own fighting the sandman but this one we're actually going to talk about peter parker versus Eddie Brock Venom in a fight that, you know, most of you probably haven't seen before unless you read this book. And I don't know how well this book sold at the time. I know I definitely bought it. I love this series. Um, I love any kind of anthology kind of book, anything that picks apart like some of their favorite moments or times of Peter Parker's life especially around this because it was Spider-Man 3 and there was a lot of Venom content coming out. Uh, you know, the Dark Origin miniseries was coming out and then you had this series uh, which explored Peter Parker and his early days and his early battles with the symbiote, including side stories that you may not knew existed before. So this was Sean McKeever coming in and going like, all right, I'm going to write a story within continuity, but that's why I use the term drifting continuity because it's like, it's not something you have to commit to to be full continuity, but that was the intention. It was trying to write something without like stepping on the toes of stories that came before it. And they did a really good job. Sean did a great job in this storyline. I believe Kano was the artist along with David LaFuenta, and the art looks really great. It's like kind of a gritty style, uh, which really works for the storyline. Because what this story is, is Peter Parker versus Eddie Brock for real, but at the, at the same time, also a story where Peter Parker tries to help Eddie Brock and uh, and you know typically in battles you see that a lot in comics especially at this point in comics you know like you would see like oh they'll battle first and they'll team up they don't really team up in this one I'm not gonna say they, they turn and team up on each other but Peter Parker does try to push away how much he hates Eddie Brock because he sees that what Eddie Brock is doing he means well at like he his goal is is heroic but unfortunately his actions are not heroic uh you know basically what peter parker finds out is the well the story starts off and it's a woman and she's like this rich woman named miss damasco i think her name is and she's taking her limo and all of a sudden she looks up and she sees that the driver much like in the spider-man 3 movie so again i wonder how much influence that kind of had on these storylines uh you know the the driver become it's eddie brock and the suit comes around him he turns into venom and he attacks her and he's getting ready to kill her in the back of the limo and then spider-man shows up and spider-man talks about how he's like oh i think i you know i saw something happening or like he kind of tries to explain how he got there and that it's not purely coincidence that he got there um that he kind of explains how, how he ended up at the scene and he swings in into the car goes through the window kicks venom they come out the other side and the two of them get into a little tough tussle but then venom's like no i'm not going to get into this here with you um you know i'm out of here and venom like runs away and spider-man's like well that's weird like he doesn't typically run from battle with me um you know uh, you know what's going on so he goes up to the woman he's like who are you why was venom trying to kill you and she's like i don't know you know i work for this company blah blah, blah. and and spider-man's like yeah but you know there's something's not right here i don't understand this like he wouldn't just attack this you know you a woman like in a car like it doesn't make sense something's not adding up i'm as much as i hate venom this is really weird behavior for him and then peter's like well maybe it's the suit doing it like who knows what's going on so peter is trying to figure things out he's playing a little bit of investigative reporter himself in this which i really like because i feel like peter as much as he's a great photographer but i always kind of wished he went the the investigative reporter route but maybe it's because i like superman too and i like how superman does that and i kind of wish it would just make peter more active in things i feel like as opposed to just being a photographer and kind of being like a fly on the wall uh but i guess that's kind of like his thing anyway like because he's a spider too you know kind of hanging back and, and observing things uh but you know in this one i really was like oh this is cool that they get to flex that muscle and peter as a character gets to go into territory he's not familiar with by doing some research so he goes and talks to mary jane he's like look venom's back i'm sorry and she's like oh my god he's back you know because last time he came he terrorized her and so this is kind of set in the early days of venom probably a little bit after the island incident as well 
and uh, you know, after you know, probably even after Maximum Carnage, but Venom is, or, or maybe not even that far in. Maybe it's even before the island. Who knows? Because uh, it doesn't exactly say when it's set, but it, this is a point where. Peter at least cares enough to try to save Eddie. So that's why I'm kind of putting it around like the between Carnage and Maximum Carnage era, like maybe in there before he kidnaps Peter Parker's parents or whatever. Um, you know, so I don't know. Well, you know, you can guess just as well as I can. And probably if you have a better guess, let me know in the comments below. Uh, but for this, you know, for, for me just talking here, uh, let's just say it's around that period and uh, and Mary Jane's freaked out. She's like, hey, last time he came up, he showed up here. He, he, he tor tormented me, and, you know, I can't deal with this anymore. I don't want him to be a part of our lives. Please find a way to get rid of him. And Peter's like, I do. We got to find a way to get rid of him, and maybe for good, but I, I can't kill. Like, I just don't want to go down that route. I can't find, you know, find it in me to go down that route no matter what he's done. Um, and so he's like, let me try a different avenue. So he goes to Ben Urich at the Daily Bugle, who it was great seeing Ben Urich again. I love that character a lot. And he was, goes in, Peter's like, hey, you know, can you tell me something about Eddie Brock? And Ben Urich's like, look, he's a psychopath. Like, I, I don't want anything to do with him. He was a bad journalist. He was a bad this, you know, whatever. And Peter's like, I get it. And I understand. And I, I don't like the guy either. And I've seen the kind of stuff he's done. I read up on him. But please help me, Ben. Like, you know, you're a, the, one of the greatest reporters I know and investigative journalists at that. He's like, please help me figure something out. And Ben's like, look, I don't want anything to do with this, Peter. Anytime Eddie Brock's involved, it's just going to lead to chaos. And he's like, I'm going to step away. I'm going to think about my family on this one, and I'm going to step away. So Peter's like, okay, I have to do this on my own. So he goes, and he's looking up old articles that Eddie Brock wrote, and he says, hey, I can't find anything. He hasn't really done much here at the Bugle, uh, just a couple freelance jobs maybe, but he worked at the Daily Globe. So he asked the girl Peggy, he's like, hey, is there like, you know, is there any way I can look up Daily Globe stuff on here? And she was like, yeah, actually, you could just do this and this. So she, you know, P Peter's trying. He's outside his comfort zone, but he's trying. He's trying to figure out what, what uh, you know, Eddie Brock is after here. And what he finds out is, okay, there's been two deaths recently before this woman and what and they were all part of the same company that this woman worked for and apparently the four of them together founded this company and you know are building themselves up and uh, and now they're like you know millionaires and stuff but Eddie has already killed two of the four so this woman is left and then there's one more guy left after this so Peter's like what you know what's with this company why is it Eddie so involved with it why does he care what are they doing that has set Eddie off I don't know so when Peter is goes back home and he's like you know after he talked to Mary Jane she goes to bed and he's like staying up researching more and more and then this letter arrives and it's from Ben Urich and Ben Urich's like all right I did some digging maybe you're right I have to look past my hatred and here's what I found on Eddie Brock and so Peter looks at the stuff and he finds out that Eddie Brock was writing a story on these people uh, before like the Sin Eater stuff and he has connections to these people but he was trying to expose them he was actually trying to do the right thing he was trying to expose that they were like you know killing homeless people and experimenting on people and hurting people and uh, to, to climb up and to get quicker test results and to get all these things almost like the Life Foundation in the movie so Eddie was trying to like you know expose them and Peter sees a different side of Eddie he was like wow you know I knew Eddie as like this slimy journalist type that tried to claw his way to the top but it looks like he actually did try to, you know, it, to to do real good out there, and and that changes Peter's perception and even mine, because like I said, I I never thought Eddie wasn't a good journalist, but I do like the idea of him on the big sin eater story of just cutting corners just to get you know to kind of embrace that fame and stuff. Um, I I kind of like that because it feels human and it gives him flaws, you know, it gives him like real flaws as opposed to him buying into something that may have actually been true. Uh, that that kind of takes away some of the flaws that I think are important for the character to have. Uh, but a peep, some people disagree with me, so if you do, let me know down below. So, Swordsman, this should make you really happy if you're out there watching this, because I know you like these storylines where Eddie Brock was a very competent and good journalist. And that's what Sean McKeever is writing here and showing to Peter Parker. And so Peter Parker admits it, like, hey, this guy was great. He, he was doing his, his due diligence. He put in the work, and he was trying to take these people down, and things got in the way, and he couldn't do it. Um, so this is, you know, really awesome storytelling from Sean's point of view but also adding that humanity to that you know to Eddie Brock showing that he wasn't just a corner cutter that he was someone who actively put in the work and tried to do the right thing and so Peter's like all right I'm gonna go revisit that woman and uh, and talk to her again because now I see that she's actually the villain of the story and so is this other guy but when you know Spider-Man shows up Venom is there again and the two get into it and then so Spider-Man's like all right there's 
you know, he got Venom away. There's one guy left. You know, Peter's like, no, this woman needs to be arrested. And so does the other guy. So Venom's like, you're not going to stop me. I'm going to go after him. So Spider-Man shows up at the, the last guy's place, the fourth member of this crew of people that worked on this company. And he shows up to defend him again. He webs him up, sticks him to the wall. And he's like, look, Venom's going to be here any second. And when he gets here, you know, like, you know, I just need to make sure you're safe. And the guy's like, well, let me go. Let me go. He's like, no, but you're also a criminal. He's like, so I'm going to leave you here for the police. And then he's like, so, uh, so, you know, let's wait for Venom. And then as soon as like that happens, Venom comes busting through the wall and him and Spider-Man get into it. And the battle is really brutal. Like Venom throws Spider-Man through a couple walls. Spider-Man like grabs Venom's head and slams it into the mirror in the bathroom. And then he sees his reflection. And he sees how brutal he's getting and how much he's not holding his punches back. And he's literally going for the kill with Venom. And he's like, I can't do it. I can't. Eddie did try to do the right thing here. He is a good person. Somewhere in there is a good person. Even if I don't see it, even though he tormented my wife, even though I hate his guts more than anything, and I hate this suit more than anything that he's wearing, it doesn't matter. I have to look at the bright side here or the, the, the glimmering light inside Eddie, and he tried to take these people down. So as they were fighting, uh, you know, fire broke out and everything, and the guy is out in the living room uh, webbed up to the wall, and he's going to be burning. So Spider-Man's like, Eddie, I got to go save him. And Eddie's like, no, like, don't save him. He's a bad person. And Spider-Man's like, but Eddie, like, you know, he, but he, he deserves to be punished for sure, but not, he shouldn't die at our hands. Like that, you know, we shouldn't give up our souls to, uh, to, you know, to get rid of his or, you know, something like along those lines. And Eddie's like, I disagree. So they both try to go for the guy, but the fire keeps Eddie back. And he can't get in to kill the guy. And so Spider-Man runs in there, coughing up, you know, hacking up, grabs the guy, jumps out the window just before the explosion. And of course, Venom did get away, but Spider-Man got away too. And he brings the guy to the police and he says, this is what the guy's, you know, like he's guilty of. You know, if you look up, you know, there's a, a journalist out there. They're going to print a story tomorrow uh, that's going to have all the, you know, spill the beans on the storyline. So this guy, he's arrested. Because obviously you can't just arrest a guy and have Spider-Man go, he's the bad guy. Like it's not going to hold up in a court of law. But Ben Urich actually released is the story and he puts in the byline uh, he puts you know Ben Urick or written by Ben Urick uh, with uh, based on material uh, you know dug up by Eddie Brock and I thought that was really really cool just like a nice little touching moment at the end there Ben Urick even having a little arc in the storyline where like Peter he didn't want to believe in the best in Eddie and then he does and at the end he shares a byline with Eddie Brock and puts out there a positive message about Eddie Brock. This was a story that, you know, I, you know, I'm doing research on and stuff, but it's based off Eddie Brock's information. And so he put Eddie Brock's name on the Daily Bugle byline, which is something Eddie Brock definitely wanted, you know, climbing his way up as a journalist through the Daily Globe, definitely wouldn't have minded to go work for the bigger paper at the Daily Bugle and seeing his name in the byline. So at the end, Eddie is reading this and it's like, you know, two of the four, you know, two are dead, but two were captured by Spider-Man and the police and they're arrested and they're going to pay their, for their crimes and everything. And here's all the evidence. And it's Ben Urich, you know, having the front page edition of the Daily Bugle and, uh, and Eddie's reading it. And he's just like, you know what, Spider-Man? you did right by me. He's like, but this does not make us even. I still hate you. And, uh, but I'm just going to let you live for today. Like that's what, that's how I'm going to make us even is I'm just not going to kill you today. And then he drops the newspaper and swings away. And then you see that the window he's standing over, the newspaper drops down and it's Peter and Mary Jane and they're sleeping. And Peter's like waking up, you know, at the, it's like dawn and stuff. And he's waking up going like, you know what? I hope I did the right thing, you know, by Eddie. And, uh, you know, hopefully, though, the monster that's in him doesn't stay a monster forever. And maybe this could be the beginning of change for the guy. And uh, I like that. I was like, wow, this is really, really well done. Um, I Like I said, I like the artwork. I like the writing. Sean McKeever did a great job because he, he told this story and stuck it in the middle of continuity that existed but didn't like undo anything. And he gave all these characters like little arcs. I mean, this is like a 15, 16 page storyline. And he gave like, you know, Ben Urich a little bit of an arc, tied him into Eddie Brock, gave him a moment sharing the byline with Eddie Brock, uh, tying it back to Eddie Brock's past, a story that Eddie Brock never got to publish, and then tying it in with Mary Jane and her emotions when it comes to Venom. And then, you know, and then being able to finally get a good night's rest at the end after, you know, the whole debacle ended. Um, so there's all these moments there that were just so perfect and i thought sean mckeever did a great job so if you haven't read this uh please go pick it up like i said you can find it spider-man family on digital it's issue number two and it's uh, one of the first stories i think it's the first story in this book and it's called undone and i thought it was very very well done very well told and that's why i wanted to share it with you guys because it is a peter parker versus eddie brock storyline uh, but in a way that you know a lot of you probably haven't been exposed to because i don't know how many of you guys read the story even you hardcore venom fans i'm sure some of you did 
but I feel like some of you may not have because it kind of slipped through the cracks and it came out in this book that, you know, didn't sell a lot of copies. But it came out at a time that was, you know, really important for the character because it was Spider-Man 3 time, first time seeing Venom on the screen. So they were telling all these like little fun stories with him. And to show that they didn't, you know, they painted him in a semi-positive light in this storyline or a positive light actually in the storyline is big because at that point with Dark Origin and, and like the Spider-Man 3 movie, they were definitely going in the way of Venom just being a villain again. And this showed, no, he's not a full villain. So this kind of pulls you back into the, the light if you're a Venom fan, Eddie Brock Venom fan. So uh, let me know what you think. If you read it yourself, let me know down below. And if you haven't, let me know what you thought about everything I talked about and the artwork that I had showing up. Let me know what your comments are down below, and we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching my channel. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.